YouTube. So this is my second video back. I'm still very out of practice with this, so I apologize. Mm. So you guys know that I'm living in a shed still. <laughs> Nothing's changed, thank you, Corona. My sister lives in a much more interesting place than I do, and that is in a bell tent out in the woods. And I wanted to give you guys a tour and show it to you because what she's done with it is actually really cool. Focus! <sighs> I'm PMSing, so like everything's annoying me right now. Like telling off everybody that I know. Just kidding. <laughs> wow, YouTube's a lot harder than I remember it being. Listen, we're gonna venture out into the woods and find my sister's tent. And we're gonna ask her what the fuck she's doing out there. <laughs> my family is very private and she allowed me to do this. And she's also, I think, gonna be starting up a YouTube. Hello? Hi. I'm here to do the apartment tour, house tour. All right, so the first step is to not get poison ivy. This is Tansy. This is her first debut on YouTube. There's a little weird fairy out here. Oops. So, oops. In we are. I'm gonna ask her some questions um, about all the stuff in here and why she's out here. Blah, blah, blah. We're gonna begin with why would you live in a tent? And also, I don't make eye contact. So don't look oh, at me. Yeah, <laughs> ask me. I'm like, yeah. It's like, it's like <laughs> am I supposed to look at the camera then? Why? Because most people wouldn't ever think to live in a tent, and I think a lot of people don't even know what a bell tent is. So why and what is a bell tent? This is a bell tent. It's made out of canvas. The canvas, it's... What was canvas made out of? Cotton. Canvas. She's big into cotton. <laughs> I'm into natural fibers. This kind of canvas seals itself whenever it gets wet. It's, it's been like a little mini dream of mine to live in a bell tent at least once. Houses are built with really toxic, like chemicals and stuff. That That's how I got aspirators from <laughs> from asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> Chansey and I are very different people. We're the closest in age, but like I wouldn't live in a tent probably. Well, I mean, I probably could, but I'm more high maintenance. She's very, very low maintenance in what she needs. So she doesn't, she didn't actually like live in this tent. Like this is kind of like her room because there's no kitchen. I mean, she could do all of that, but it would be kind of pointless because once winter comes along. Okay, so like how would you do this in the winter time with a bell tent? It, it insulates better than you'd think, but yeah, it doesn't hold the heat for a very long time. Right. Originally, I was going to try to live in a bell tent in Ireland, but I said it's probably the worst place to live in a bell yeah. tent. <laughs> in a really hot place, can you install People air use, conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> People use tents in hot places. They, I think, I, I don't know, but if you have a thicker canvas, like in Australia, people would use a thicker. Well, uh, you can't do it with this one, but on um, more modern bell tents, the walls can roll up and you have ventilation. How long does it take to set up? And what are the tools that you need to set it up? You can set up a bell tent in 10 minutes on your own with a modern one. But with this one, it took probably like an hour because I had a platform. So you have to have like a, a main support. I feel like it'd be hard to do by yourself. To make it? Oh, to put it up? Yeah. Uh, I don't know how you do that. With, with this one, oh, there's my little oh. bee friend. She, she has a piece of mud. Oh, she, <laughs> she dropped it. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Oh, she dropped it. She's very flustered because I just broke her home <laughs> by accident. I woke up to like a and I'm like, ah, that's annoying. But, um, so I noticed there's a, uh, it looked like a wasp or a hornet building a nest behind my mirror. But I learned that it's not an aggressive bee and it makes little mud houses for its children and it fills them with paralyzed spiders and then leaves. It, it, it fills them <laughs> with paralyzed spiders <laughs> and it's like, there you go. The, in the modern ones, they have, te uh, I think, telescopic poles, so they're easier to put up, like, on your own. What you do with the modern ones is, is you stake out the opposite sides. You go around and stake it out first, and then you put it up. Where would you get a bell tent at? This is actually our ants. Yeah, they used to do reenactments and stuff, so this they wanted something that was period, and this is from, like, World War One or Two kind of area. 
Um, yeah, soldiers probably use it. The general or whatever. That's another thing that bell tents would probably use for them, yeah. Like war. Oh, yeah. And stuff. That was probably a, a big use of them. So, it's better than like a normal tent because you can actually like make a home. You can stand up. You can have fire in it. Yeah. I don't know. It, it breathes. Canvas is really great because it breathes like polyester nylon that like modern really light tents are made out of. That's why you get like really sticky in the morning and stuff. Because, yeah, so it, she used pallets. I just threw down some pallets in a shape that I thought the tent would fit on and leveled them out with rocks. The rug that I'm sitting on right now, I was watching her make and she she made two of these. There's one on the bed and one on here, but she's actually made this out of sheep wool, no, cruelty free. No yeah, so she actually makes these. She's made two of them. I don't know when she's going to make another one, but she does sell them as well. She does costume design as well. Seamstress. Yeah, she's a seamstress. That sounds cool. What? This isn't Getch's. No. <laughs> I do <laughs> have Getch's little... His his was pretty, one. like, matted and stuff. It's already pretty much matted. And you put it down, and you put, like, soap and hot water, and you rub a lot. And that's called wet felting. Okay, I'll put her Etsy link I'd be interested in, in getting it too. How much... Okay, she knows exactly how much she spent on everything in here. Oh, yeah. And she, she didn't spend anything on the tent. But how much do you think a bell tent would cost? This is a four-meter tent. I was going to buy five meter. It's kind of this is probably like a one person tent. If I maybe like you could put two people in it, but a five meter costs six hundred and up. My mom also she um she shop she thrifts and auctions auctions and stuff, and she buys vintage stuff and resells it. So yeah. so a, a, f a lot of the things I have in here were free. She she went to an auction. She bought this big load of stuff that nobody wanted for like a dollar. It was like a huge pile. Which you can get a lot at auctions. I don't know yeah. if you guys have ever been to an auction, but we grew up going to auctions all the time and they, like my dad would buy like a ton of stuff. And we had to haul it up. <laughs> it was horrible. I hated it, but yeah. And anyway, so there's some stuff there that left over that she didn't want and some of the stuff came from there, so a lot of it was actually free. Um, most of the rest of the stuff came from thrifting or yard sales, so I only spent $168. And forty dollars of that was this uh, trunk. Thirty dollars was on helping my aunt make tent stakes, so that was kind of a tent expense. And these sheep, this sheepskin cost thirty-five dollars for me to make. And how much was that? This uh, what is the cow rug? It's a cow skin. There's so much waste in the states that she doesn't it, like to waste too. Like she'll kinda... literally eat roadkill. <laughs> That's another video. Yeah, actually, she's she, there's so many videos that she could make of all the things that she knows how to do like i'm not joking with the roadkill like she actually knows how to process process <laughs> roadkill uh, in a in a tan, tan. in a way tan it and but okay. also like not to where you're gonna get sick from eating it or something so that whole cow from south america skin was ten dollars a yard so, so this trunk we're gonna talk about and talk. uh how old is it it's 100 years old it's probably from the I feel like this is like the antiques road show <laughs> Old things, and I'm really into old things because when I found that Victrola in the basement, I got it working. I suddenly was really interested in old things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I want to build old things down, which is so easy to do here in the states because there's just so much thrown out. But, yeah. People call them steamer trunks. Technically, a steamer trunk is actually a smaller trunk. I learned all this just because I got it in a research. So she learns all this stuff like after, like she likes to research and learn about yeah. new things. I don't, I have patience um, to do that. I don't learn about anything. I'm I like, get, <laughs> I get obsessed briefly and then. Yeah. But, I mean, people throw around the word steamer trunk. I may as well call it a steamer trunk because that's how people use it. But it's actually a wardrobe trunk. And they would use them on steamboats and trains in the 20s. Um, from the eight, 1880s to, um, you know, mid-1900s. This is this one's probably from the 20s or 30s. Yeah. And it's super heavy. And I imagine if it was filled with stuff, it'd be really heavy. So I don't Can know. you do so activities in here? I, I dance in here sometimes, so. <laughs> That's an instrument. It's a shruti box. <laughs> Just should, 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 should I play it? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> It. <laughs> now that you've accomplished your dream of having a built tent, <laughs> <laughs> what's your next dream? <laughs> yeah, because tell them about your next dream, which I think is very interesting. I don't know if it's my next dream, but to live in a horse-drawn wagon, like kind of a either like a shepherd's wagon or a gypsy barter wagon. And she wants to go across America in it. Well, not across. I mean, yeah, it's travel. You travel in it. Um, another thing that she'll have up on her YouTube um, is she's going to show how she made these rugs, how she set up the whole tent. 
I want to make videos content. about like wild crafting, like making things. Yeah, okay, that's what it's called. I was trying to figure out what wild it was craft, called. Yeah. Wild craft. I, was saying, I said so, homestead. But. Another word maybe is like um, ancestral skills or like earth skills or like, you know, like natural fibers would be a big part of it. So if you guys want to follow her, I'll put her link below, I'll put her Etsy below if you want to buy any of her, the stuff that she makes. <laughs> Stay at work.